In 1873, the Pawnee Hunter and Suits raiding party clashed in a brutal battle along the Republican River in Nebraska. Are you ready to dive into the gruesome history of Massacre Canyon? This isn't your average showdown. It's the Pawnee Hunter versus the Suits raiding party in a clash that would go down in infamy. It's a battle for the ages, a fight to the finish, and a massacre that will leave you reeling. We're right to take a wild ride through the darkest depths of American history. Have you ever heard the saying, blood is thicker than water? Well, in Massacre Canyon, it was the blood that made the water run red. Do you want to know who emerged as the ultimate victor in this brutal battle? Join us to uncover the chilling tale of Massacre Canyon, or the Pawnee Hunter and Suits raiding party. It was a horrible sight. Dead braves with bows still tightly grasped and dead in stiffened fingers. Sucking infants pinned to their mother's breasts with arrows. Bowels protruding from openings made by fiendish knives, heads scalped, with the red blood glazed upon them. A stinking mass, many already fly-blown and scorched with heat. The Pawnee tribe, once powerful on the central plains of North America, had suffered greatly by 1873 due to disease and warfare, with their population reduced to a few thousand confined to reservation lands in Nebraska. The tribe petitioned for another buffalo hunt to fortify their winter food supply and practice their ways, which was granted under the leadership of Texas Jack. However, several changes in the administration of the main Pawnee Reservation had occurred since the previous summer, including the installation of a new Quaker superintendent, William Burgess, by President Ulysses S. Grant, who hoped that pacifist peaceable whites could quell the violence on the frontier. William Burgess was described by a revered member of the Scouts as woefully unqualified. In an attempt to address the terrible conditions at the reservation, Burgess authorized the Pawnee to travel to the Republican River to hunt, hoping to repeat the previous year's success. However, due to an administrative error, Texas Jack was unable to lead the scouting party, and the Pawnee were forced to rely on a 22-year-old agriculturalist named John W. Williamson, who had no experience guiding or leading a hunting expedition. Despite this, the Pawnee hoped Williamson's lack of experience would lead to less strict practices than those employed by Texas Jack. Were they being too optimistic? During the hunting expedition, the Pawnee had a successful hunt, but their day turned sour when they encountered a group of Sioux warriors. The Pawnee had been warned by white buffalo hunters that the Sioux were on the warpath, but the Pawnee leader, Sky Chief, dismissed the warning as lies. However, when the Sioux appeared on the ridge, the Pawnee were caught off guard and unprepared. The Sioux were in full war regalia and charged toward the Pawnee, who knew that they had no chance of survival. Sky Chief, a Pawnee leader, decided to end his own son's life to spare him from being killed by the Sioux warriors who had ambushed his tribe during a buffalo hunt. The Sioux had been alerted by white hunters that the Pawnee had encroached on their land, and they attacked the tribe with a force of 1,000 warriors. After the initial battle, the remaining 100 Pawnee warriors and civilians were hunted down and killed in a canyon, including women and children who were sexually assaulted and killed. Only a few managed to escape and seek help from the U.S. Army. After the initial attack on the Pawnee village, the Sioux continued their onslaught, killing men, women, and children. Many Pawnee mothers killed their own children, rather than have them fall into the hands of the Sioux. Some prisoners were taken, and any valuables were looted. The Sioux left the scene and were free from retribution. Later that day, U.S. cavalry soldiers arrived at the scene, and they found 59 dead Pawnee. News of the massacre reached the remaining Pawnee, and they were devastated. Some survivors managed to escape and were tended to by a doctor before being taken back to Fort Genoa. The events that unfolded were tragic and heart-wrenching. The Pawnee people, who had already suffered through years of intertribal conflict, were brutally attacked by the Sioux. The Sioux saw it as a necessary victory, a just search for justice against the Pawnee, who they believed had stolen from them and taken the lives of their loved ones. Many Pawnee people lost their lives, as many as 300 according to some Sioux reports. The victory was monumental for the Sioux, but for the Pawnee, it was a crushing defeat, a day that will forever be remembered with sorrow and despair. The Massacre Canyon battle was a tragic event in American history, representing the endless cycle of violence and bloodshed that has marked the history of Native American nations for centuries. While atrocities committed by the U.S. Army and militia forces cannot be excused, the sad fact remains that some of the deadliest massacres of American Indians were perpetrated by rival tribes. Massacre Canyon was only the final chapter in an almost endless litany of brutal intertribal conflicts. Are there any memorials or commemorations for the victims of the Massacre Canyon battle?